Hi there, this is Kelly Leahy and I'm the Tech Coach at Collins and this is the second of two videos explaining how to set up an assessment in Eduphoria. So the first video was about how to create the questions and how to actually name it and, and get started. This second video is more about how it's going to be administered and how to check to make sure your um, the oral admin is set up correctly on it. So. Here I am at my questions, and I want to make sure that this system can read this poster and any other uh, image that is going to be used on my test, whether it's in the question stem or in some cases you may have a picture that you put in your answer choices. So to make sure that the uh, system is going to be able to read your image, you need to click on the edit tool and then you need to right click on the image and choose image properties. When you choose image properties, you'll see a box that says alternative text. So whatever that image says that you'd like the students to be able to read and hear, you need to write that out with a comma to slow down the speed at which the um, robotic voice reads. So in this case, my image says, are you a good digital citizen? So I wrote out R, comma, U, comma, a, uh, comma, etc. And then I wrote out each one of those uh, small speech bubbles. When I'm finished with that, I click on OK, and then I make sure I'm up to date by clicking on the Update button, which is in the bottom right corner. So I click on Update. And I'm going to do this on every single image that I've used, except for, of course, you're following STAR protocol. So on a reading test, you're not going to allow for the student to be able to hear a passage read out loud, just the questions. So let's go ahead and check to see how that sounds. We're going to check our math problems and all of our other questions. So I click on administration to check to see how the admin, the oral admin sounds. After I click administration, I come over here and I click on collection and I choose preview online testing. So this pulls up what it would look like online for a student to take the test. So I'm checking for oral admin, so I click on each one of these bubbles to make sure it sounds the way I want it to sound. And if it doesn't, I start fixing it, and that would be going back to edit. So I listen to this one. one. Which Disney princess lived in the sea? I like the way that sounds, but also I notice I've, I'm going to have to edit that because I've got too many number ones there. So I'm going to click on close, then I come back to questions, then I come over to the first question and hit edit, and I delete that question, click on update. Now I go back to administration, go back to collection, go to preview online testing, and now that looks better. I'll go ahead and listen to all of these answer choices to make sure the answer choices sound right. And then I go to the next question. When it comes to math, if you click on the sound button here, the oral admin, and, and over four equals 32. You don't like the way that sounds. That doesn't sound mathematical or doesn't fit in the STAR uh, protocol. You can click on close. You go back to the questions. And then, of course, you're going to go back to editing. This will be problem number two. And then I'm going to click in here and notice this gray box. Don't forget that if the, the number is in or the information is in the gray box, it'll be more likely to be read correctly according to the math symbols. So just be aware of that when it's not being read correctly, there's really probably a good chance that somewhere along the line you've uh, clicked away from that gray box. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because this problem sounds right. Now on the pictures, if you want the student to be able to have oral admin on the picture, you're definitely going to have to uh, make sure and check. So I'm going back to administration. I'm going back to collection and I definitely am making sure that anything that has a picture or a chart uh, in it is going to be read out loud correctly. So 
I'm going to go ahead and click on oral admin. Use the image below to help you answer the question. All right. So now I noticed that I didn't did not have that voice read the rest of these little speech bubbles. If you don't put it in, the uh, automated voice is not going to be reading that information. So anything that you leave out when you are typing is something that's going to be left out with the automated voice. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go to edit. I'm right clicking on the picture. I choose image properties. And again, I need to use my arrow key over to go to the right. When I'm finished, I'm going to click on OK. And then I click on Update. So that is checking to make sure that your oral admin is working correctly. So the next thing that you need to think about is you need to think about the layout of your test, especially if you're printing out test for some people and then maybe others are going to be taking it online. When I set up my printing, I could go to Layout. I'm choosing intermediate, I'm choosing test booklet, and then on each question, I'm going to adjust this so that, again, it looks more like star. So there's probably going to be about two or three problems per page. So I'm going to choose 10 lines, and then for number two, I'm also going to choose 10 lines in between the space. So then it looks like I can go ahead and have number three also on the page, and the answer choices are not split. And if I keep going down, I'll note it, you'll notice that you've got the reading selection of 10 lines, and then number four is attached to it. I'm going to choose 10 lines for that also. So another option you can make is you could choose to insert a page break. That's all up to you and all up to your um, formatting. And then this, of course, is if you want to make those questions be a column. And some of you may like that and others may not. All right, under layout, you, this is the place you'd also click on print to get a download of the PDF of the test. The next thing I want to look at is test key because the test key is another place you can check to make sure that you have associated your standards by going to the edit tool, clicking the plus, and choosing the standard that that question matches. You really do want to do that. When you're finished, you click on save. The last place we're going to visit is administration. And of course, we've already visited this once to check on the oral admin, but we also want to make sure that we are checking the box for what students uh, will be taking this test. So I would check um, all of my social studies students. That's under the students. And then typically we don't do anything else with any of this. So I would just check the box that associates the students with that particular test. Then the last thing I'm going to check under administration is collection. And I'm going to make sure that the test is available uh, on these particular dates, start date and ending date. Sometimes Sometimes teachers can't see a test that's coming up in the system because the start date or end date has not been set uh, according to the date that that person is happening to check. We also can change the status from pending to active, by the way, here. We are doing online testing at Collins, so we have enabled that. We also are enabling our teachers to start the online testing so that we don't have to have administrators involved in that. If a person is absent, we can always have an administrator or a person who made the test can always go back and click on administrators only, start the test for that particular class. The testing style is interactive because at our school we offer in-person testing with paper and test uh, bubble answer sheets but we also offer online testing to our virtual students. Another place to make sure that you've checked is this teachers allowed to print answer documents so that every teacher can print the answer documents. And that would be all for starting your test. Sounds like a lot, but you get used to it. And go ahead and email me, klahey at conrisd.net if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.